today's class, we are going to be uh, discussing CVJ, craniovertebral junction, uh, which I believe is uh, a difficult topic for most of us until, uh, you know, we remember the line. And then it's something that I don't really have to memorize. Uh, keep it handy. And then whenever you're reporting a case, uh, just quickly uh, have it. Okay. It's a little bit of lag. I don't know, but it should settle soon. So uh, let's begin. Uh, we'll briefly uh, discuss the anatomy in the beginning and then I'll jump off to uh, the uh, craniometry and then we'll look at the cases, okay? So that's how the class is going to uh, run. So this is the part that we have to discuss. So I have uh, the CT and the MRI images here. So so let's start. You guys have to tell me the answers, okay? So a uh, few of the things are pretty basic stuff only. So what is this point here? Anybody can tell me what is the point A? What is this point where the frontal bone meets here? Yeah, beak frontal beak. But what do we call this? Yeah, this is the nasion, right? Where the frontal beak meets the ethmoidal bone. So this is the nasion, correct. What is point B here? What is this? anterior wall of the cella what do we call that the anterior wall is the tuberculum cella good what is the posterior wall obviously that is the dorsum cella so point b here is tuberculum cella what is point c so this is the basi occiput or the clivus so what is the most posterior part of the clivus called as that is the basion so that is something which is very important so this is the basion point so what is point d here what is point D? That is the basion opisthion, right? So you must have heard basion opisthion line. So D is opisthion. Where is point E? E, what is E? E is the hard palate. All of these points are very important because all the lines that we are going to uh, learn are going to run from these points. So it's very important that you recognize what are all of these points because these are the lines that I'm going to teach you. Okay. So E is hard palate. What is F here? Yes, F is atlas. What atlas? Anterior arch of the atlas, right? So F is the anterior arch of atlas. And what would be G? G is the posterior arch of atlas. Fine. What is H? Pretty easy stuff. So that's C2. What part of C2? That is the dense, right? Dense or odontoid of the uh, C2. And I is the body, body of C2. Yeah, so this is something which all of us understand. Coronal, same. Let's see. Coronal, what is point J? What topmost point? This is the hypoglossal canal. So what is this beak which is forming the hypoglossal canal? The eagle appearance that we have learned. It is the jugular tubercle. So J, J for jugular tubercle. It's the jugular tubercle which is going to form the beak, the eagle's beak in which the hypoglossal nerve is going to run. What is K here? What do you think is the point K? So that is the occiput, right? So this is what is the occipital bone. So this is the occipital condyle. So point K here is the occiput or the occipital condyle. What is point L? L for L only. What are these? These are the lateral masses. Yeah, we saw anterior arch and posterior arch of atlas. So these are the lateral masses of atlas. So L for lateral mass. Okay. And finally, we have H, which is odontoid or the dense and I is the body of C2. So this is what is the normal anatomy. All of you following from first year till final year, everybody got this. Okay. So this is what you have to understand. One quick refresher, one more time, very quickly. Nasion anteriorly, tuberculosis. Curriculum cellae, hard palate. These are the anterior points. Keep that in mind. Basion, opisthion. Atlas anterior, posterior, dense. Coronal mein kya hai? Jugular tubercle forming the occiput, lateral masses. And here we have C2. So basically occiput, atlas and C2. These are the two joints and we always have to see the symmetry in terms of the distance on both the sides and in terms of the joint space on both of the sides. No need to memorize here. This is all about symmetry. Okay. So this is how we have to approach the CT. MRI, same bony points very quickly. So see the same bony points. So we don't have to run through the points again. This is the hard palate point. This is the tuberculum cellae. This is basion. This is opisthion here. Can you all see the anterior arch of atlas and posterior arch of atlas can you all see the dense and c2 
Yeah. So pretty simple here. Let's look at the coronal image. Again, same. Can you all see the jugular tubercles? Can you all see the occipital condyle, lateral masses, body of C2, dense of C2? Yeah. Okay. One quick question. What is this ligament? Can you see this ligament going laterally? Anybody can tell me what this is? So next we are going to venture into the ligaments. Ye konsa ligament dikh hai, jo coronal mein best dikh hai? Correct. This is the ALR. Or do you have a problem? This is the ALR. Let me pull the mic closer. This is the ALR ligament. Good. All right. This is not the cruciate ligament. Okay. This is ALR. Jo aise laterally jata hai. Cruciate should be cruciate. No, it should be cross. This is lateral. Aise slanting that is how you'll remember alr so now let's venture into the ligaments before that just for your theory purposes cvj will most of the times come as a theory answer i haven't seen anybody being so unlucky to get a long case in their final exam from cvj that is pure bad luck uh, if you are very very unlucky you will get otherwise you usually don't get that okay so plane radiographs are the ones which we don't really do nowadays because it can show us very very severe anomalies but minor anomalies will miss so we don't really use it we can use it as a preliminary investigation in trauma if you don't have anything else so lateral and ap are the two minimum views we want and we usually do an open mouth for the odontoid in trauma we wouldn't do flexion extension but if you have a congenital case where you are suspecting uh, uh, dislocation atlantoaxial dislocation then only we will do flexion extension views on x-ray okay for ct scan it is the best investigation to show us the bony anatomy to pick up congenital anomalies and throughout this lecture we are going to talk about ct MRI, two things only. It tells us about the ligaments, which CT can't. It tells us about spinal cord, which CT can't. A lot of times in the spinal cord, we will have compression. And this is how all of these CVG are going to present. They're going to present with occult, either it's occult neck pain, or if there is spinal cord compression, then they're going to present with spastic paralysis, right? So that's how they're going to present very sudden presentation when the cervical medullary junction gets compressed. So you have the history for a long time, they would have neck pain and then suddenly there is spastic paralysis. That's how these guys tend to um, present. So MRI is mainly cord and ligaments, right? Flexion extension MRI can be done. Again, congenital atlantoaxial dislocation, we can do that. Okay, so this is the role of different investigations. Let's go on to ligamentous anatomy. So now we'll do this in parts, okay? Sabse pehle yahan pe dekhenge. Here what we have are the act structures. How you're going to remember is ACT, okay? Act. Anterior most is the smallest, most useless ligament. Flexion extension MRI or flexion extension X-ray, both of them have only one role, which is to pick up atlantoaxial dislocation. Okay, I'll talk about that once we go forward. It is the most sensitive investigation to pick up atlantoaxial dislocation. We do, uh, so, so that is what is the role of any dynamic X-ray or MRI. Yes, Hirayama, I was about to say that. Hirayama is a very rare indication where we will do flexion extension MRI. That's the only indication, that's the only disease that is picked up on flexion extension MRI. Yeah, Hirayama disease. Okay. So we have ACT. So A is the apical ligament. It is the most useless ligament, which has the least role in stability. Then we have cruciate ligament behind it, which is the most useful ligament. It is the primary stabilizer. As the name says, cruciate. So it has the vertical band that I see on sagittal and it has transverse bands, which I will then see on axial and coronal. Okay. So what you will remember, cruciate as the name says, has a vertical limb, which I'm going to appreciate on sagittal. And then I'm going to appreciate the transverse part of it on the axial view. Okay. So this is the most important. Then look at this. The ALL, anterior longitudinal ligament is going to continue superiorly as anterior atlanto-occipital membrane. This is the posterior longitudinal ligament. PLL superiorly continues as this T here, tectorial membrane. Okay, so not posterior atlanto. That is what you have to remember. So tectorial membrane is the superior continuation of PLL. It's one of the notochordal remnants, if you remember. Then we have ligamentum flavum. Ligamentum flavum here is going to continue as the posterior atlanto-occipital ligament. So ligamentum flavum continues as posterior atlanto-occipital ligament. Behind we have the interspinous ligament, the supraspinous ligament, which continues as ligamentum 
nuclear nuclear ligament yeah so this is the continuation should i repeat one more time all anterior atlant occipital ligament pll tectorial membrane ligamentum flavum continues as posterior atlant occipital ligament and your supra uh, supra spinous continues as ligamentum nuque so these are your ligaments so continuation you remember separately and act you remember separately out of all of these what are the primary stabilizers